What's up guys, and welcome back to another eBay Miniature Rescue. Today, we're going to be working on this $15 Lord of Blights that I found on eBay. So the first thing I did was take it out of the box, inspect everything. This model actually came nicely assembled and only a little bit of paint on it. So I'm going to toss it in the Sonic Cleaner and then prime it with Vallejo Service Primer Black. Now I've been seeing a lot of OSL work on Instagram and YouTube lately. So I really wanted to try something new with this model and something I've never done before. So I didn't do a whole lot of research, probably should have, you'll find out why, but I ended up painting this model twice. And I'm gonna go through a little bit of the first one and then we're gonna hit that second one with a little bit more knowledge and see what happens. So the first time through this model, I pretty much painted it blindly. And what I mean by that is I tried to remember how this was supposed to go. And I kind of had some idea of using the airbrush and getting these dark blues, kind of that moonlit color and then mixing that in with a lot of the tones that were supposed to eventually be on this model. Now what I really didn't do was undercoat this model in a way that I could do the OSL with the airbrush and still have it be effective. So the first thing I did was airbrush from the top with a dark blue. And then I started coming in with reds and orangey reds and then yellows and then kind of highlighting finally with white. And it doesn't look horrible. Coming back in with some white ink mixed in with that blue color and highlighting all of the top down stuff gave it a nice punch and it looked, you know, like moonlight, kind of how I was trying to go for. The problems that ended up coming up were that the colors weren't separated enough. There's no mid-tone, there's no variation in color underneath this OSL, so it just looks kind of like a mess. So that was the first time around. The second time, I'm gonna approach this a little differently and read up a little. So there were two main areas that I looked at to find information on how to do this properly. The first one was Marco's Not Just Mecha, which is an awesome YouTube channel if you haven't seen it, and Squidmar Miniatures' uh, specific video on object source lighting, which references this Roman Gruba article that I also read. So this time around, armed with some new, very useful information, I'm going to try and get this as right as I possibly can. We'll see how it goes. If Somehow you haven't heard of Marco Frizzoni of Not Just Mecca or Emil from Squidmar Miniatures. I highly recommend checking out their channels. Links will be in the description and I'm going to throw them up on top of the screen right now. So the first place I'm going to start is with the skin. Now I'm going to use some of the blue that I'm going to use for the moonlight and I'm going to mix that into the base color. So in this case I'm using dead flesh for the skin and I'm putting quite a bit of blue into it to really desaturate that and just bring it down to kind of a really dark level. And I'm going to go over the skin pretty lightly just building up that green mostly on the highlights so any of the higher points where that light's gonna be hitting the most. Now this looks kind of funky at first, but the more you do it, the more you build it up, it starts to create that look. Adding just a little bit of Abaddon Black into that mixture, I'm gonna to start to glaze in the shadows. And this is pretty much gonna maintain the same kind of skin tone, but it's gonna be a little bit darker as if these upper areas are casting shadows. Sunrise. 
Now using some of that original skin tone that I mixed, which was the blue and that dead flesh, I'm gonna add just a little bit more dead flesh into it to then create a highlight that we can then glaze onto those uppermost areas. My, my main goal right now is to create the moonlit appearance of all of these materials. So I'm trying to do shadows and highlights like I would normally if this was just, say, dead flesh. But with that blue and a little bit of black mixed in, we're really getting a very nice desaturated look. Eventually, we're gonna come back in and do a lot of airbrush work to really accentuate the moonlight and then eventually the fire. With Typhus Corrosion, Vallejo Metals Copper, Abaddon Black, and Magic Blue. I'm going to mix all of these together on the wet palette, and we're going to get a really desaturated but grainy metallic look. Now I want a little bit of this copper showing through, and the Typhus Corrosion is going to give that a really nice texture, so that, you know, even in the moonlight, quote unquote, it's still going to look a little bit different than the rest of the model. I'm also going to add just a little bit more magic blue to that mix, and that's just going to give us a nice highlight in some kind of random places on the metal. Now coming in with Scale 75's Arbuckles Brown, which is a nice deep purple leather look. I'm going to add a hint of blue into that, and I'm going to go over all the leather. I'm going to be using Mornfang Brown for all of the wood. I also added just a little bit more blue into that mix. And I'm just going to do some really quick sketched on highlights. Adding some white ink into that Mornfang Brown Magic Blue mix, which is pretty dark. I'm going to highlight everything that is mainly in the moonlight. After I'm done highlighting everything, we end up with a pretty nice looking desaturated moonlit figure. So now we're going to try and accentuate everything and really bring out that OSL. Starting with Drakenhof Nightshade and Gnome Oil, I'm going to do an all over wash. And what this is really going to do is kind of tie all of our colors together and it's gonna give a lot deeper shadows in those recesses. After that wash is finished drying, we're gonna use a little bit of this white ink with magic blue through the airbrush and do a top-down highlight that's just a little bit lighter than the other blues. So the main idea behind this airbrush highlight is that we want to create a little bit more directionality with that moonlight. So over his left shoulder and kind of running down his body, we just want to lightly bring that up with a little bit more white, and it still has that blue in there, so it really mixes with a lot of the highlights that are already there, but it really shifts where that highlight is coming from. So I came back to the wet palette, got a little bit of black and added it to that skin tone that we've already had, and I decided to go back and really strengthen some of those bigger shadows. Now, it's not that there weren't shadows in these areas, but I really felt like they needed to be deeper because this is a pretty stark amount of light coming from the top.
Now that our moonlit highlights and shadows are pretty much where they need to be, I'm going to bring the fire. Starting with a very thin down gory red, I'm going to start the OSL from the weapon, where those marks of Nurgle are on either side. So the way I'm looking at this is it's casting kind of a half cone of light out from each of those sides. So there's going to be a little bit of difference um, in the way that it's pointing, but for the most part, you know, it's, it's a circle. Uh, so it's shooting from below all the way up to his helmet and just barely, barely touching that weapon. Mainly what I'm trying to accomplish right now is setting up the base tone for what that fire effect is going to look like. It's going to be more intense, closer to the weapon, and it's going to dissipate the further away it gets. So with Moon Yellow, I'm going to intensify that fire effect closer to that weapon. With Moon Yellow and just a touch of this white ink to desaturate that, I'm going to start to highlight the undersides of a lot of this stuff that's closer to the flame. Anything that's metallic that's further away gets a highlight as well because it's naturally more reflective. But anything really close to the where I was putting the yellow to begin with is going to get that under highlight. Coming back to the wet palette, I'm going to add black to that skin tone once again, and I'm going to start to do a little bit more shadowing on any of the areas that are just opposite of that flame. So where that flame hits the skin and is bright, just directly on the other side of that, if there's any kind of obstruction, it's going to be a little bit darker. So there's a little bit of back and forth that needs to be done with these steps. So eventually I came back with some red and then some more yellow and repeated these steps until I was happy. After I got to that point, I came back in with some straight moon yellow, watered down into a glaze, and I continued that under highlighting in some of the more reflective areas and anything that was closer to that flame source. After finishing up this yellow, I was feeling pretty good about the way that this turned out. Nurgle is one of my favorite things to paint and this model is a really fantastic addition to some of the newer Nurgle models. This OSL thing was pretty difficult to achieve and I ended up, you know, stripping that model once just to get there. I may have been able to salvage the work that I had done, but I don't feel confident or know enough to know if I should have or could have done that. In any case, I feel pretty good about where it ended up. Can I know where this Before I close this video out, I just want to let everyone know that if you want to see still pictures from multiple angles of all the projects that I do on this channel, hit me up over on Instagram. Give me a follow and you can kind of see what I'm doing before these videos go up. So, what do you think? I like it. Thank you once again for joining me on another eBay Miniature Rescue. If you like something about this video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing as it really helps out the channel. Thank you once again. I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video.